Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. Somebody sent me this file and they want to know, is there a way to figure out what font this is? Well, once you've converted to a curve and saved the file, uh, you can't go back and turn it into a text to find out what text it is. If you were going to do a lot of these, and this one is Time New Roman, I would uh, put it way off the page and just keep it and then you always have it. Now, this font is real identical to Times New Roman. If we left click, right click, there is a few things differently. The W is about the only thing that's really different. The D's are dead on. And, well, it's actually this one. This is Times New Roman. So let's get, let's put this um, font below the other font. Let's just get rid of that line. The only difference is the W and a little bit of curvature to the top of the D's and the L. That's very easily done. Matter of fact, let's get them out of the page. I'll tell you what, I'm going to make her page bigger or their page bigger. So it's out of the page. Let's get rid of that bar. I'm going to make this font look like that. What you need to do first is convert it to, a, well, go to object and break it apart or control K. Now you got individual letters. We're going to go ahead and select them all, go to object and convert them to a curve. Now we need this font to look like that font. Pretty easy. It's a curve. So now we can delete these nodes. Don't worry about it right now. And then take those two nodes and right click and turn them into a line. Then we just need to select that one and put it pretty even and maybe delete this one and delete that one and move this over a little bit. See, and you can see it's already looking like that. Let's, this has a little bit of a curvature. Well, it really does. It has a flat line. So what we can do then is just add a couple of nodes and take that node away. And then you can spread these out. And that's pretty much dead on. If you set your nudge factor something pretty little like 0 0.01, you can actually take that node and just cursor over a little bit. Whoop, got to select it. And cursor over just a little bit, give it that skinny deal. And then, as in this font, I thought it was actually curved, but it's not. It's actually a little dip. Well, it might be a little bit of a curve. So what you could do then is take your shape tool We'll go ahead and grab all these. Well, no, you know what? Do it one at a time and add a node. That's going to put a node right in the middle. And then we could, our nudge factor is still low. We could just nudge it down a little bit and do the same thing on the other letters. And I'd be willing to bet uh, nobody can tell the difference once you're done. And it, you know, it's your deal. So here we can't really select both of these, so we're going to shift select them. And we're going to go up here and add a node. That put a node right in the middle. Now this one you're going to have to go down a couple times and then maybe over a couple times. And what I would strongly suggest when you do that, you could do the exact same thing for this D, but to make them both exactly the same, I'm going to hit the plus key on the keyboard. I'm going to make the second one red. I'm going to grab one of these, well, I'm going to grab a node we haven't changed, and I'm going to move it over that D. It'll snap right to it. Now I'm going to change my nudge factor to something larger, like two inches, and I'm going to nudge that one out of the way. This is the one we want, so I can just delete it and then turn this one black, and you're probably going to fill it in anyway. Now, once you've done that, a lot of times you can't right-click but it worked. A lot of times it won't work. If that doesn't work, you can always take the Smart Fill tool and fill in each individual letter. You know, if you've done uh, too much work to it, if you want to engrave this word. And I did not do the L, but they're pretty close. Let's change this one. Let's fill this one in with black. See, that's what I was talking about. A lot of times you can't do it. So just take the Smart Fill tool and fill this in. And I beg the difference. 
with the exception of the L that I did not do, if you could tell the difference. But it would always be nice if you're going to make a bunch of these uh, and you like that font, you know, once you've turned it into a curve, and it's kind of funny, she used another font for, or they, I keep saying they or she, I get so many emails I don't uh, really pay attention to gender. See, that's a curve too, and this is probably Times New Roman. So let's type out that uh, capital W, make it a little bit bigger, go up to our font, Times New Roman. A lot of times, Corel, you have to pick off of it and get back to the text tool. I'd almost, well, it's a little bit different. It's got rounded, uh, a little bit rounded corners. You can see on the bottom, so this is, it's a different font than that. But you could do the same thing here. This has a little bit rounded corners and rounded corners on the bottom. While we're talking about it, let's just do it. We need to convert it to a curve. It already is probably a curve. And then you could take these nodes, go up to windows, dockers, corners, and you could curve them just a little bit. Curve them just a little bit. Same thing on the top part. You could actually curve. This might be too small to curve, but we'll try it. We might have to reduce our, yep. One of the one of them was too much. If you ever find that, just go back and let's go like 0 .001. And then grab those two nodes. It just, you know, that's not enough. Let's go 0 .009. And there you go. You've got a rounded font, much like the one in the description. But like I said, if you find a font you like and you can't remember what it is, uh, just put it off to the side and keep it, because now you can tell it's Times New Roman. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.